What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Weekly Flare Podcast, episode 50. I'm James Walter, and with me is a surprise man himself, Mr. Chris Garcia. <laughs> this is going to be a short episode. This is going to be crazy, Chris. We just got done recording last week's episode. We're recording this week's episode. That was a confusing sentence. And uh, this is probably the most unprepared we've been for an episode but yet the most prepared because we've really been preparing for this episode all year yes you think about it mm-hmm. this episode is going to be our like standouts of the year we've done very minimal research on this mostly just fact checking kind of things um this was the things that stood out to us this year movies tech video games tv shows i tell you no tv shows for me because i didn't really watch any new tv shows this year but Chris says he did, so we'll see what he has to say about that. Yes. Yes, you, yes. that's what you told yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. We'll figure it out. Um, so this episode's going to be that, and we hope you like it. It'll be so fast, dude. It's going to blow your mind. It's going to be the craziest year in review that you're going to hear because um, all the other tech people that are doing this probably prepared better throughout the year for it. And we just jumped right in. With no notes of our thoughts throughout the year, which next year we will do mm-hmm. and keep better notes. So this episode next year will be a lot better. But this is for the people who are like the diehards and just love watching us make fools of ourselves. What you should have done. Which is basically us. You should have done is pulled different segments from each show that were really, really, really good and pieced them together. Yes, that would have been great. But you don't have time. If I had the time, the time to do that. <laughs> But I also work for a living. True. And if this was my job, I would do that, like most people would do for mm-hmm. their job, to make a sweet year-end review. Um, I would have had to start like a month ago yeah. to get all the clips together. How I, I mean, wanted. if you piece five seconds, you're already – five seconds each episode, what is that, already uh, two, minutes and, two minutes and 50 seconds? I don't know. Something like that. So, I mean – we could have done some crazy stuff. Yeah. And next year, maybe we'll try. But this year, this is what we're doing. So, Chris, what do you want to start with? Movies? Yes. Let's start with movies. We've already had the list up. We got the list up. So, Chris, let's say top three movies this year. Um, I'm going to say, since I watched Star Wars. Okay. Uh, Jurassic World. Mm-hmm. Um, that is really hard to say. That I really want to see The Hateful Eight. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Man, I don't... Because I didn't really see a lot of movies this year. Oh, Chris, you didn't see a lot of movies. No, I can tell you. You're right. You didn't see no, a lot of movies this year. I've been very year. busy. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say those. because uh, I really need to see Ant Man still. Oh, Age of Ultron. Okay, the Star Wars Age of Ultron and Jurassic World. Age of Ultron came out this year. Mm-hmm. Really? I thought. Ant-Man was only... Oh, yeah. Age of Ultron was this year. Yes. Okay, so you're saying Star Wars, Jurassic World, and Age of Ultron? Yes. Okay, that's a good list. Those got all very well reviewed. All right, here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to caveat this with my anticipation for Star Wars has been building up for the last two years. So, I will admit, not the best movie that came out this year, objectively. Uh Uh-huh. Objectively, while it was in the top of the best movies this year, objectively probably was not as good as say like the martian or mad max surprisingly got really good reviews although i think star wars was a better movie than mad max but i didn't see mad max to say that for sure i am going to say however my favorite movie to watch this year the one that i enjoyed the most was star wars and the reasons for that go beyond the scope of this episode but that was my favorite movie to watch this year most enjoyable for sure the martian That movie was great. Are you sensing the theme here of the sci-fi-ness? Yes. Okay. The Martian was a very good movie, like I said. Um, If I had to say, it probably is a very close tie, even for me personally with Star Wars, just because it was just done so well. Uh, It was just a a good movie, Chris. You really should have seen it. I I know Interstellar probably blew your mind so much that you never want to watch another space movie again. But it was 2014. Right. That was such a good movie. It was. And The Martian was really good. I gotta say, for a movie that I saw in 2015, would most likely be Interstellar. That's true, because you did actually see that this year. We talked about it earlier this year. Now, my third movie for the year is very difficult, because Jurassic World was good. Mm -hmm. 
um, just it's dinosaurs and Chris Pratt. Like that was just a great combination. The rest of the cast though, eh, not so great. I did like the antagonist, the main antagonist. I think he's a great actor, even though mm-hmm. most people disagree with that. Whatever. Ant Man, surprisingly a good movie. I can't really put it in there just because. It was, for the most part, your Marvel, Marvel movie, in, yep. you know, individual hero movie. But at the same time, it really wasn't. They did a really good job with it. But I just, I can't put it in my top three. Um, Avengers just doesn't make the cut for me. It was an enjoyable movie, but I, I just can't put it in there. Spectre was really good. And I kind of want to put Spectre in the top three. But I don't know, that's hard for me to do also Mm -hmm. and i'm trying to think but what else did i see this year that was better i didn't see mission impossible i didn't see terminator even though that definitely would have been it i've heard creed's really good i haven't seen it yet and that's that's about it Mm -hmm. those are all the really oh pixels came out this year was that awful it wasn't awful but it was not so that being said, I think I'm going to go Star Wars, The Martian. I'm going to go Spectre. Mm, okay. I'm going to go Spectre. While it was not the best Bond movie and got 7 out of 10 on IMDb, I mean, that's the same that Jurassic World got, although Jurassic World does do better on Rotten Tomato, on Metacritic, I mean. Mm-hmm. I think I'm going to go with Spectre. And not because I think it was the absolute third best movie I saw this year, but because from what I had heard about the movie and what I actually saw, what what I saw as far as what I perceived it to be was better than what I had heard rumor-wise for the movie. And so I think for that reason, it deserves to be pushed a little bit more. Gotcha. Even though it is Daniel Craig's last James Bond and he's tired mm-hmm. of the character. Um, I still thought the movie was, it was just a, it was a good Bond movie, you know? It's James Bond, so it's never going to be a great movie. Mm-hmm. But it's James Bond, so it's really hard to be a bad movie also. Even Quantum of Solace, which is probably the worst Bond movie that I can think of. Mm-hmm. I mean, I haven't seen all the Bond movies, but it's probably pretty low on the list. Even that was an enjoyable movie to watch. Skyfall was great, though. So he's done four Bond movies mm. now. I, I enjoyed it. So there you go. That's our list. I know everyone's going to yell at us for that because I've heard like The Revenant, which like opens on Christmas Day, so I can't really put that in there, but I've heard that's supposed to be great. Like I said, I heard Creed's really good. I didn't see it, though, yet. I haven't seen it yet. Mad Max, like I said, I heard that was surprisingly really good. I haven't seen it yet. I can only base this off of what I've seen. Yeah. And of what I've seen, that's my list. Subject to change, had I seen other movies. Yeah. I think that's fair. All right, Chris. So let's move on. Tech. Technology. Technology. What was your favorite technology of the year? Whether you purchased it or just my... saw it. Because we didn't, let's be honest, we, neither of us purchased a lot of new technology no. this year. As, aside from phones. But year six is even a year old though when you bought it. Mm-hmm. I bought Rachel a 6S. I bought me a new Moto X. Mm-hmm. That's about the only stuff I bought I'm, that was new this year. I bought other things, but they weren't new to the yes. year. I'm going to categorize mine in three different pieces. Okay. Uh, I've got marketed. Mm-hmm. I've got technology that is out there that we've covered. Mm-hmm. That's not really marketed. And then video games. Okay. Fair uh, enough. So I would say the marketed one that I really, really enjoy that I still want to buy is the Snaps. The snaps, yeah. The snaps, the snaps is one of my favorite yes. marketed pieces. Um, Absolutely agree. The fish tank water. Oh yeah, the plant. fish tank water thing. That was, was pretty. Cool. Was kind of cool. I guess it doesn't really appeal to me because my phone is really my second nature. Yeah. Um. So I use it a lot, and that snaps tool would be something very beneficial to me. Oh man, the snaps would just be so sweet. I would say unmarketed out there today would most likely have to do with robotics. Uh, it would be the robotics done with the... Um, well, like every prosthetic yes. that we saw this year. I, I would have to categorize it with the person or the, the thing that would climb up the stairs or the, the suit that was able to be stretched 
Oh uh, yeah, different, yeah. Different lengths. I forgot uh, about that. And then I think they also did some robots that were able to run. That creepy robot dog mm-hmm. horse they, thing that we saw at exactly. the beginning of the year that like they were kicking and wouldn't fall over. And it stabilized itself. That thing was amazing. I would say that or the America versus Japan. Oh robot. yeah, the robot battle. The robot battle. Oh yeah. Which would be That's still supposed to happen next year, yeah. right? That yep. they are saying it's going. So those are my favorite right there. Video games, I haven't really bought a lot of them. James still wants me to get uh, Rainbow Six. So good. But I'm, I've am i gotten, I've built up with Call of Duty Black Ops 3. I didn't like it at first. Mm-hmm. I didn't like it at first and I started to like it. But I still think it's above Battlefront because I guess I'm so used to the gameplay of Call of Duty. That's a low blow for Battlefront. Yeah, I know. I guess I'm so used to Call of Duty and the Black Ops or the, the Battlefront was just a little bit different. Oh, but yeah. I still enjoy it. Plays very different. I would say they're probably on the same level. That's fair. Battlefront, as good of a game as it was, I could see why people would not think it was great. Mm-hmm. All right, so me. I'm going to say technology. I did not buy one of these, but every single list I looked at to make sure I wasn't missing any like big technology that I bought this year, because like I buy a lot of stuff, and sometimes I may forget what came out in what year. Amazon Echo. Every single list I saw, that was like on the top of the list. Mm-hmm. If everyone bought that thing, they thought it was going to be a dud, and they love it. It's like you can talk to it from across the room, it uh-huh. hears you great. I keep hearing about it. Everyone that, I mean, I say everyone, and by everyone I mean like all the websites that I've seen talk about it in the last couple of days doing their like year wrap-ups have absolutely loved this thing. And it makes me kind of want to get one. You should get one. Just to see how it is. And if like, you buy one, I'll get one. Everyone's like, it's a, it's like a Bluetooth speaker. They said, now, obviously, the sound quality is not going to be as great as, like, your Bose headphones or your, I was going to say your Beats, but I don't think those are really that mm. great. Like, your Sony nice studio headphones. You know, none of those, like, big over the ears yeah. are going to sound better than this Bluetooth head, than this Bluetooth speaker. But they said it works great. And uh, it's very responsive, and apparently you can talk to it very natural. Mm-hmm. Unlike Siri, apparently, that you still have to... I th- I feel like when I use my when I use Rachel's phone and then her Siri, I feel like I can talk to it normal. I feel like I can talk to my phone with Google Now very uh-huh. normal, or with Moto X very normal. But <laughs> speaking of speaking of, it's gonna turn on because I said the phrase. But I don't know that people have just said with the Amazon Echo, it makes you realize how unnatural you still have to talk to mm-hmm. computers, and it, it makes me want to get one. So we'll see. Of course, Snaps, those phone connectors that turn all the plugs into the same plug, and it's magnetic and so cool. I do still want to get those. I haven't forgotten about them. Um, we'll, have to, we'll have to wait till next year. But here's what I'm going to say. The technology that I was most looking forward to buying this year that I actually went to purchase and could not because it was sold out were those Bluetooth earbuds. Oh, that's right. Remember at the end of the year, I said, the yes. thing I want to buy this year is Bluetooth earbuds. I finally decided which pair I wanted to buy. And so I'm just going to spend the money and buy them. And I went to the website, and the pre-orders were all sold out. And so now I'm going to have to wait till next year. Nice. And try again. So here's the problem, though. CES is going to happen right when we come back from the break. CES is like beginning of January. And we're going to come back, and they're going to show off more Bluetooth earbuds. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to have to decide, do I wait for these now or do I buy the ones I was going to buy? I don't know. I'm not expecting there to be great Bluetooth earbuds, Mm -hmm. but there's a chance it could happen. And then I'll be back into this, okay, waiting again cycle, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But I was really looking forward to getting those Bluetooth earbuds. And I was very disappointed when I, the ones I find the side I wanted, I couldn't get. Yep. Hmm. And bad on me for taking so long to decide, but still. I wanted them, and now I can't have them. And it makes me want them more. Not really, but I am kind of sad about it because I was really looking forward to getting rid of them, all my wires. The sound quality aside, I don't care. I just want to get rid of the wires. I don't need my podcast when I listen. That's going to sound great. Yeah. I don't need my podcast when I listen to them at work to sound perfect audio quality because it doesn't need to. And quite frankly, when I listen to music at work, I don't need it to sound perfect because no. I'm just at work not, I wouldn't like mix a CD or anything, but I, for what I need, what I was gonna buy them for, they'd be perfect. Yes.
I uh, well, speaking of headsets, we have a pair that we got to get rid of at work, mm-hmm. and I made them work, and so I might get them for free. They're Bluetooth over the head. Nice. So um, that they're was not Beats, cool. are they? No. The, the, are they boys? These are Sabas. Oh, Sabas. No. Okay. I gotta look at the name. It's are they like Sony? They're not Sony. They make nice headsets. Mm-hmm, they do. They might be. There's something S A something. I gotta look at it, but I'll find out. Um, where was I? Technology. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's the technology for me. Yeah. Like I said, I didn't buy. I mean, I bought my my new phone, mm-hmm. my Moto X Pure Edition. I like it. It's great, but I don't know if I'd say it was like my favorite tech of the year. Of course, um, the robot. All every single robot we've seen this year, I couldn't pick one. They yeah. were all just amazing. But I think the one that most excited us. And tell me if I'm speaking wrong here, but I think the one that most excited us was that crazy four-legged one that they couldn't kick over that was running up and down stairs. I'm pretty sure, and that came out of what, Boston, right? Or something like that? I I think that was the one that got us the most excited. Yeah. And then from there, it was just like a a victory lap of all the other robots we saw. Mm -hmm. So, So, I mean, I bought just my six and my Pebble Watch. I bought a PlayStation 4 and some blue... Two speakers and a forty-three inch TV, and I'm happy. Yeah, I don't think I don't think anything I bought that we used for the podcast even was new to this year. Not even your board. Nope that's that's a twenty. It's a twenty thirteen or twenty fourteen okay. revision. I mean, it was probably manufactured this year, yeah. but it's not like a new model for the year. They don't release a new model every year for it. Um, now we get into video games for the year. Whew. It's hard. I bought a lot of video games this year, Batman. as usual. Batman was phenomenal, although not as good as the previous titles. Mm-hmm. So Batman, Star, Battlefront, Star Wars. Battlefront, so. of course. Um, uh, Battlefield Hardline came out in March. That was very enjoyable, but not what uh, people were expecting. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, Rainbow Six just came out. That's been a lot of fun. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain. Mm-hmm. I, I just... I mean, I literally just the other day bought Fallout 4. I was saving it for when I got back from Christmas break because Rachel was going to be gone for a week. Mm -hmm. And I was saving it to play then. And I was like, you know what? I'll just go ahead. I had some free time over the weekend. I was like, I just went ahead and bought it. Went ahead and got my game started. So when I got back, I could just jump right in. So I've played for a few hours. Um, I can't say that it's my favorite game of the year just because I haven't spent enough time with it. But I felt like if I had bought it when it came out, it would be a very good contender for that position. Metal Gear Solid Five is definitely in there. I don't know. I can't pick my favorite game of the year. It's hard. Mm-hmm. If I had to, I could probably order them in some way with probably Battlefront too high and Metal Gear Solid probably too low for the game's objectively but Mm -hmm. the good thing is i don't have to review them objectively because i'm not a video game reviewer for a living that's why we do this podcast and not a video game review podcast because i can be a little subjective from time to time and subjectively you know i would say subjectively i would probably put rainbow six the highest and then high battlefront and metal gear solid five okay on based off of my enjoyment and how much time I know I'm going to spend with them. See, I'll probably never pick up Metal Gear Solid 5 again next year after I start playing Fallout 4, even though I didn't finish it. I might go back to it every now and then. Probably won't touch it much. I'll play Battlefront until the next one comes out, just because I like the game. Same thing with Rainbow Six, though. Mm-hmm. So it's hard for me to put Metal Gear Solid up there because I'm just not going to go back and finish it, even though it was a great game. And so, subjectively, it's hard for me to rate that higher. Mm. Objectively, yes, it was a better game than those two games. Mm. There was more to do. It was, they say more complete, but that's kind of a subjective term as it is. But whatever. That's why I don't review things. Yeah. Because it's it's hard. I know that I'm being subjective, but they don't care if you are. (laughs) I know I'm doing that, but whatever. It's hard, you know? It's hard to rate something without your own opinion on the matter. Because you're reviewing it. Yeah. So that's that. Chris, I didn't watch any new TV shows this year, did you? Um, I watched Bob's Burgers. 
I watched a little bit of Turn, so I'm going to continue to watch that. Cool. Um, not really a TV show, but it is on Netflix. I did watch Ridiculous 6 yesterday. I heard that it was not good. It's funny, but I wouldn't put it in a great movie. Yeah, I heard that it was like two good jokes and the movie was terrible. There were some good jokes in there, uh, but like you said, they're just it's Adam Sandler dry humor. It's mm-hmm. just not that good. There was some I wouldn't recommend it for younger kids. Well, yeah. No, it's Adam Sandler. I mean. That goes without saying. Exactly. But other than that, I mean, that was about it. Cool. Well, Chris, what do you say we wrap this up? Because we've been doing this for a lot longer than either of us expected to. Exactly. Which we knew would happen. But we do want to keep it in the one part. So we're going to get on out of here. Thank you guys for joining us this year. We really hope that you've enjoyed this wonderful project experience that we've called the weekly flare don't worry we will be back next year and it will get better we are excited to see what because it has to because yes. we do it every week so how could it not get better we're excited to see what happens next year what people will bring in technology advances of what we've reviewed last year Yeah, we get a kick off with ces so yes. it's basically right back where we started uh upcoming movies and i think for our year uh, when our year anniversary comes up, we still need to do the cinnamon challenge. Yeah, we should. Yeah, we need to. We need to do it. We should do it with all of our previous guests and get them. We all actually the we should. Challenge. Yes, we should. That is a great idea. We'll have to talk to them and see if we can get them all to come back. That's a good idea. I think we can. Okay, perfect. All right. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you guys in 2016. Peace. <laughs>